name is Mimi Vreeland. I'm a horticultural agent with UF IFAS Extension in Flagler County. Today we're going to be talking about how to build your own accessible raised garden bed on rollers. The construction of it is 4x4 four four with a 36 inch height, which makes it accessible for people with disabilities, are suffering from injuries, or maybe just have trouble bending over to be able to access it from all angles all the way around. The raised garden bed is constructed out of pressure treated four by four legs, pressure treated two by four bracing and framing for the garden box itself. And the garden box is sided with smooth one by four cedar for both the capping and the side. And just take into account that the rollers are about three to four inches. So take that into account when you're actually cutting the lumber for the legs. All right, let's get started. Okay, we just transported the rolling garden bed over to my mother's house. It's now in her carport and we waited until it was here before we put the cedar siding on. We didn't want to dent the nice cedar siding. We had pre-cut the one by four cedar. You can see that once we put it in, it's stacked. So that there are four pieces, four one by four, starting with the first piece that covered over the initial framing for the flooring and then the rest, the other three to cover the siding of the box itself. And then what we did was we placed the, gar the rolling garden bed so that the drain hole is facing downhill following the drainage pattern of the driveway in the carport area. And we also installed two diverters so that as the water is draining, everything is guided down towards that hole. And before we put the plastic liner in, we're going to fill pebbles up behind the diverter so that it's level with the diverters themselves, and then add the plastic liner. The plastic liner most people would be using in this situation would be a nice uh, black plastic moisture barrier that's either used for ponds or underlayment for flooring. And in my situation, I was trying to recycle because I, I didn't know how soon I'd be getting back to the hardware store. So what I did was I ended up recycling an old plastic drop cloth. I'm gonna have two layers of it and staple gun it inside. I'm not gonna do any staples in the bottom because that would be an area for leaking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press in the plastic all the way around, cut it to fit, and then only staple along the two by four before I put the capping on. And then at each corner and along the sides, I'm gonna have rocks, a large rock at each corner. And then I'm gonna be using a mesh bag for pebbles that I'm gonna put along with a screen over the drain hole itself. some of the ways that I've recycled materials. I've got an old piece of screening. I need to take this to get it rescreened. This is a, an old bathroom screen, window screen. And what I'm doing is I'm gonna cut a piece out of the screen that's still in good shape. Just big enough to cover the hole and then use some duct tape 
And then another thing that I've recycled is an old, it's a synthetic mesh, like a synthetic flannel or felt piece that was a bag for something. And I've cut that. And this is what I'm gonna use to put the rocks in. So what's gonna happen is I have this piece of screening and I'm gonna cover over the hole like this and then tape it down with duct tape. And then after the liner's in, then I'm gonna put this mesh bag with the rocks over the hole once the plastic liner's in. Okay, I've got the liner in place now with the recycled plastic. I have it staple gunned underneath all of the capping all the way around. I placed most of the capping on and I left a few pieces off to show you that I had it pre-drilled and marked each piece all the way around so that I remembered which piece to put where all the way. I've got both capping pieces and this final corner cap right here. So we're set to go and I do have the rocks for drainage in the bag with a rubber band to keep the soil out of the pipe. And over here, I've got a wheelbarrow ready to go with pre-mixed three parts of one part compost, one part manure, and one part kind of a lighter planting container, raised garden bed soil that's a little bit lighter for a raised bed, just so it's easier to roll around. And I also got a nice assortment of different kinds of heirloom vegetables, which are great to use uh, because a lot of the heirloom vegetables will reseed, so you can use the seeds for next year. And I've got a, kind of an assortment of cucumbers, squash, peppers, and basil that will be nice for a raised garden bed that is only gonna be about nine and a half to 10 inches deep. Okay, here's our finished project. We've got the soil in place and the veggies planted. So let's get growing. If you have any other questions, please visit our website. We'd be happy to assist you with any other information. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us.